Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Are you excited to be here this morning? Yeah. I invite you to get up on your feet and let us praise our God together. Thank you for coming for Business Garage. Thank you for those of us that are joining in online. Let us worship our God who has been good to us. Come on. Put your hands together like that. Because God has been good to you and to me. Come on, man. Come away, but I'll still praise him. Situations come around, but I'll still praise him.
a shout and sing a hallelujah to the Lord for the victory he has paid for us, the price he has paid for our sins. Lord, we thank you this morning for the victory we are experiencing today. We thank you for life. We thank you for love. We thank you for mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for upholding us in such tough times, Lord, you're with us and you're winning all the battles on every single side for our sake. Today we stand this morning as more than conquerors. Church, why don't you raise a shout and a praise to thank Jesus for the victory he guaranteed for our sake. Amen. Amen. Can I hear loud amen? Amen. Anybody victorious this morning? Shout amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Turn to your neighbor and help me make them feel welcome at a location, at a hosting center. Online, we are thrilled you're here with us. If you're listening on Spirit Radio, if you're listening on Harvest Radio, wherever you are, we see you, we love you, and we celebrate you. Thank you so much for choosing to join us for Business Garage. You may take your seats here in the house at a location. You may take your seats. Thank you so much for being here this morning. My name is Florence. I'm very thrilled to be your host this morning. And before we go any further, I would like us to welcome a very special group of people. If you're here with us for the very first time, you're watching online for the very first time, you stumbled upon the link, somebody shared it with you, we want to welcome you. Let us know online that you're watching right now and where you're watching us from and our host will make you feel welcome. But here in the house, at a location, at a hosting center, we want to make you feel so special this morning because you are so put up your hand wherever you are and our team will welcome you in a very special way first time guests here in the house anybody at a location wherever you are yes we see you yes we see you thank you so much for joining us this morning our guest experience team i'm sure has made you feel welcome and they're giving you a special card for you to fill out so that we can get in touch with you amen yeah. amen now today is a bit different as you may have noticed already that we have started a bit earlier than we usually do. We have had a slight change. We now start Business Garage at 7.20 a.m. So many of our friends are not yet on. Why don't you go ahead and share the link? Just grab your phone, get the link out, and put on your status. Nudge your friend on that WhatsApp group. Tell them, guys, today it has started a bit earlier, and let them plug in so they don't miss what we have prepared for them today. All right, Worship Harvest, why don't we remind ourselves who we are and tell our first time guests, who are we? We are a movement of the gospel, discipleship, and mission. And we are committed to catalyzing spiritual, social, and economic renewal in our immediate communities. And as a result, the world. And we believe that church begins on Monday and Sunday is garage time. PP, yes, right here, right now, you have just parked your car, your business in a garage. And what we're going to do today is equip you to run the best kingdom business wherever you are, because we believe when your business succeeds, our families succeed, our nation succeeds, and as a result, our world is made a better place. So that's why we insist that you share the link so that everybody who is in business, who is, wants to get into business, has gotten out of business, can learn something today that can take their business to the next level. Now, I want to invite us to continue with worship this morning. Our worship team is still here, yeah? Yes, come on, help me celebrate them first of all for the incredible job they do. They are going to lead us as we give. I'm going to invite us to worship God with our giving this morning. So if you came with a tithe and an offering, I want to invite you to get it out right now and prepare it, put it in an envelope. If it's a tithe, an offering, our guest experience team is coming around. Just ask them for an envelope and slip in your tithe and your offertory in that bag. But if you're watching online or listening to me, you can also participate by sending your tithe, your offering, a rise and build by the land to these numbers. In MTN it is 0778-618. 418 and Airtel is 758 618 418. If you'd like to use any of our merchant codes, the MTN Momo Pay code is 148722, and the Airtel Pay code is 116032. 
If you'd like to give through our website, it's very simple. Just type in your browser, worshipharvest.org forward slash give. And as we worship God with our giving, this wonderful worship team and band are going to lead us in our worship. Help me make them feel especially welcome. Come on, give thanks because we have been invited to an inheritance which is incorruptible, which is undefiled, and that does not fade away. Hallelujah. I testify for your goodness Through the ages Your power has made me what I am Forgave my past, gave me purpose In your strength I rise And walk with you who lives in me I have come to take you as my portion My everything, everything I will live to take you at your word You are everything, everything
Have you ever wished that there was someone who could tell you what they've gone through and how they've avoided certain pitfalls? Looking back, there are mistakes we've made and which we want to share with you and make sure that you avoid. We are here to handhold you, we are here to help you actually survive and thrive. The Thrive Conference is here to help you build a kingdom-minded, a kingdom-based business, a business that will thrive. A business that you'll enjoy working in and working on. Uh, it was Warren Buffett who said you should come to work tap dancing. That is the exact environment we want to create for you. So we'll be using frameworks like the business model canvas in which there are nine boxes that can help you really improve your business. So where are you where are you blinded? Because what you're blinded to, you'll not be forgiven the consequences of you still suffer the consequences of that which you do not know. How do we then deploy those levers to actually make you win? There may be cases where you have lost trust with the customer or with the stakeholders that you actually work with. So we'll help you rebuild the, the trust using the trust triangle. So how do you build trust, especially when it has been broken? Beyond that, we want to actually help you market your business better. How do you build a marketing funnel? How do you make sure that your conversion rate is really good? Your sales funnel is stuffed with many prospects so that you actually have a good yield at the end of the day. So how do you make sure that customers come? What does your net promoter score look like? What does your employee net promoter score look like? And how can you make sure that there are more people really advocating for your customer? It was Kevin Kelly who said that all you need is a thousand uh, raving fans. How do you make sure that your customers are really your raving fans? How do you grow the business and how will you sign out of this world with your business? 97% of businesses die when the owner dies. Will your business die with you or you will die with it or it will die before you? How do you then sign out and make sure that the business really does better even after you're gone? Thank you so much. See you at Thrive Conference. People, you can do better than that wherever you are. Make a loudest shout. It's a good day for sure. Welcome to Business Garage. If you've just joined us, you are right on time for the real stuff. Now, I want you to do for me something. Could you just get your phone out right now and get that link? Yeah, probably already using your phone. Just copy that link from wherever you're watching from and test it in your, on your status and on all those WhatsApp groups, letting them know that we have started officially. Because some people are not aware that we've started a bit earlier today. And I don't want them to miss today's conversation because it's going to be extremely powerful, right? So share the link. Are you done sharing the link? At least let me get a confirmation from here in the house so that I know that we are good to go. Are we good to go? Good to go there? All right, welcome to Business Garage. Thank you so much for sharing the link. My name is Florence. I'm very honored to be your host this morning. And today's conversation, my friends, no one should miss it. I'm very sure it's going to be extremely fiery, but very, very informative for you as a business leader. In the house today, we have a special guest from Uganda Revenue Authority. But before we dive into the conversation, I want to invite our guest to introduce himself. You know what we do here at Business Garage? We send greetings, we send shout outs. So just go ahead and say hello to the audience. Send shout outs to whoever is watching. I'm sure you told them you're live. And then just introduce yourself. Okay. Hello, Worship Harvest family. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. And hi to my wife, Rafiki. Hi. Yes, uh, I'm happy to be here. I am part of the Worship Harvest family. I'm excited uh, today to be here and get ready for some uh, wonderful nuggets that uh, we are going to share here. But I'm excited to be here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. But you didn't tell us your name, unless you want me to tell them your name. Okay. My name is David mm -hmm. Rusoke, mm -hmm. and uh, I work at Uganda Revenue Authority. I've been there for... Uh, a few years, mm -hmm. a couple of uh, a couple of decades, but uh, yes, and still counting. Mm. Uh, yes, and we're there. We're serving God. Mm. Uh, we're doing. Uh, uh, where you see government standing is because we're there. Yeah. But uh, uh, I am uh, married, yeah. and uh, 
yes, uh, interestingly. Uh, th this week I'll celebrate 19 years. Wow! Uh, yes, so that's uh, a highlight for this week. Mm. And um, yes, we have three beautiful children. Yes, and uh, yes, we love the Worship Harvest family. Thank you. All right, happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, Irene. I know you're watching. Thank you so much for leading by example. Now, this morning, this past maybe month, couple of two weeks, we have been exploring the different facilities government has put in place to support businesses that most business leaders don't actually know about. They don't know about them, they cannot take advantage of them to take their businesses to the next level. We had uh, someone from the Uganda Securities Exchange, last week we had someone also coming in, and now we want to hear from Uganda Revenue Authority. Two different, two bodies that most people run away from. The public is constantly running away from the police. Then the business leaders are always running away from you are a. And today we want to know. <laughs> we want to know in detail. Because you know what? I, last, last week but one, we learned that 30% of all our prof revenue goes to government through taxes. And so government is such a significant partner in our businesses. Is government here to take, take, take? Or does they, do they have a, a role they play in our businesses that we need to know about so that we can become good partners? You see? Because right now we are viewing, viewing them as the partners who take. But I don't think in a partnership it's about taking. It's about your contribution and my contribution to take this business to the next level. There are over 45, 40 to 45 million Ugandans. And of those, maybe 2 million, like we had a conversation, are returning their taxes. There's definitely a problem there, right? And so you're going to educate us today. I know we don't have so much time, but you're going to take it down to Omutua once to educate us today about taxes, the benefits, etc. But let's start with what is URA and what is their mandate? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm. Uh, yes, Uganda Revenue Authority uh, was set up by an act, mm -hmm. Parliament, uh, CAP 196 of the, it's a URA Act, mm -hmm. and uh, our sole purpose is to assess and collect taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, we assess and collect taxes for, for government to take care mm -hmm. of its recurrent expenditure. Government has a lot, but our main purpose is to really assess, collect, bring, put it in the consolidated fund, then mm. uh, our supervisor, the Minister of Finance, goes ahead yeah. to spend it on the citizen. <laughs> of course, I can't get into uh, a lot, but the budget yeah. was read last year mm. concerning this financial year, 20, mm. uh, 22, 2023, and uh, uh, government has put out uh, a budget of 45 trillion shillings. They need 45 trillion shillings to ensure we are safe, mm. to ensure uh, our public systems are working yeah. and they are serving us to ensure that the law is working for you. Yeah. Uh, they, they need that money and as soon as you bring it, it goes down to ensure that you have services. So they provide a lot of services which we are enjoying. Many of us run here but even if you had a gunshot, you don't, you don't think about it. You're like, maybe they're chasing someone. Mm. Uh, that means government is working. working. Uh, we know the night economy is alive. Mm. Uh, th there's so many things that government is doing to ensure that we live as free Ugandans doing our business. You'll fly out, come back, you'll start your businesses, do your work. But uh, of that, uh, 45 trillion uh, we are able to collect and uh, the part that has been given to us is about 25.1 trillion which is about 63 uh, percent 60 percent mm. and uh, ideally that means they have to borrow oh yeah uh, they have to borrow to take care of us and you can imagine if you have a family and uh, you borrow 50% uh, to, to take care of your children, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, it's crazy. But uh, ideally we have about 2 million, 0.6 taxpayers. Mm -hmm. And uh, of those 2 million, <laughs> uh, yes, uh, of course, like you said, we are not famous, but uh, of those 2 million, the people really contributing a few. Mm -hmm. 
the people that are contributing. The players are many. Yeah. We are 45 million Ugandans. But the players, the ones that are contributing, mm -hmm. are countable. There are mm -hmm. quite a few. And uh, that's why I'm also excited to be here. Because after this, yeah. I think Worship <laughs> Harvest, uh, the businessmen business here are going to be compliant yeah. and will be able to take yeah. Uganda out of economic dependence yeah. to be economically independent mm. and to be able, yes, to ensure that our children, our children's children are not in debt, yeah. but uh, they, they are taking uh, this gospel to mm. the nations and to the world. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, David. Clearly, there's so much you need to tell us in between there. Because the 45 million and the 2 million, there's quite a gap there, which I think is largely caused by lack of knowledge. There's something that's not connecting there. And that's why we want to have as many people come like you to this platform to educate us on such things like taxes. So if you're watching online, I know that you have many questions about your RA. I'm very sure. I don't even need to remind you. So fire away. There's a team online that is waiting to get up all those questions and send them here so David can be able to answer them. Hopefully, he'll be able to answer all of them. But one thing is key. Remember, David is on the government, okay? David works for the organization that collects the taxes. So when you're asking the questions, please ask those that are directly related to URA. So David, would you educate us on the mandate of URA? What does URA do and the different taxes? Just give us a brief. There are so many I know. Give us a brief of the different taxes and who is liable to paying what taxes. Because some people definitely, it's not that they're even refusing to return the taxes, it's that they don't know. So educate us on the mandate and who is, what are the different taxes and who is liable to what? Okay, thank you once again for that. Um, uh, the truth is uh, we as Uganda Revenue Authority are supposed to assess and collect governments for national, uh, for, for really we, we, what we usually collect we put mm. in the consolidated fund. Whatever is paid today doesn't come to, yes it will come on a year account but it is forwarded that day. So yeah. ours is uh, to collect and assess and ensure we administer uh, the various taxes. We also collect non-tax revenues okay. and uh, uh, I won't go into that a lot today, but the non-tax revenues include uh, driving license and all these others, passport and these others. But uh, uh, we have uh, two categories of taxpayers, the non-individuals, those are individuals who are not human and the individuals, mm. and uh, they have different categories. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the subject is quite broad, but uh, I, I, I will cut it to what, what I would like to share here, especially uh, if someone is doing business. Yes. Uh, we have the income tax. Okay. And the income tax act, uh, as amended, uh, has, uh, it's a big book. Yeah. Uh, we have the VAT act, the value added tax act. Mm. And uh, of course we have amendments. Um, and uh, we, we also collect international taxes, yeah. especially if we have goods and services coming in. Mm. Uh, we will uh, levy on those. Mm. Uh, then we have the stamp duty, local excise duty. These are the, uh, the, the, the different laws that we administer. Mm. And uh, of course, uh, for someone doing business, I expect them to apply for mm. a tax identification number and uh, taxpayer identification number. And that is an identifier that identifies you as a person who is doing business and then when you start remitting taxes we see mm. and we know what is due what is liable mm. and uh, you're able to honor your obligations uh, the law is clear ideally i'm sure of the 45 million well we could have a few uh, let's let's call it the young who are let, even if we call it 60 percent mm. Uh, of the 45 you'll find uh, then we have those who are in business yeah. and uh, those are the people that uh, we are really interested in because you'll find certain laws applying to them depending on what they're doing but ordinarily if you're doing business i expect you to mm. special adhere to the income tax act yeah. the tax procedures code yeah. and uh, the value added tax act the local yeah. excise duty mm. act uh, I, there's a lot there, but I know you, you said we don't have all day. I could go on and on and on. But uh, ideally, how do we know that uh, someone has tax to pay? There are returns which are filed, 
we are right now under the self-assessment regime yeah. where you declare yourself yeah. uh, you come you look at the law you look at the taxes due mm. and you file returns returns are what inform us that this is the tax that mm. you're supposed to do when you file a return there are different returns we have the annual returns we have the monthly returns we have the weekly returns but mm. the annual returns of and the by annual uh, the income tax returns which can also be amended uh, depending on what is happening in the business. Uh, thereafter, we have the monthly returns, and that's where the, mm. uh, the VAT, the value added tax, and the PAYE come in, and the withholding tax returns yeah. come in. There are monthly returns, uh, which you file monthly, there are due dates, yeah. and uh, ideally, this is what uh, happens if you're doing business. And then the returns inform. Mm of whether you have tax to pay yeah. or you don't. Yeah. Otherwise, on a normal, we won't know, mm. but you're supposed to file. And uh, yes, uh, that is really, uh, I hope uh, we're taking it all in. But after filing the return, uh, that means you're supposed to pay where tax is due. Yeah. Uh, there are due dates for that. Uh, for the annual returns, you're given six months after the end of the financial year. Mm. Of course, uh, there are financial years uh, so if your financial is running from July to June, that yeah. is the normal year of income, you're supposed to, you're given six months within which to file uh, your annual returns. Okay. Then there are provisional returns. As the year is going by, you're selling phones, mm. you're doing some business. Of mm. course, you're selling, maybe you bought this at 1 million shillings and you're selling it at 1.5. Yeah. Uh, you'll find you're dealing with some some profit in there so you're supposed to file your provisional taxes within there your estimate of your expectation of income mm. and then also bring that because you can't keep money in the business yeah. government wants to really take care Run of the, the citizenry mm. so uh, we will see uh, you filing the return the provisional return and then the monthly return especially for people who are supposed to file VAT mm. and those are people whose turnover is above 150 mm. you could register voluntarily but those are monthly uh, every month you're mm. supposed to file mm. now when you don't file uh, that's a challenge how do we you're out there we assume you are thriving <laughs> the economy is growing at this rate <laughs> and you are you are not reporting you're yeah. keeping the money so uh, we take it upon ourselves and the law empowers us to assess and uh, ensure that uh, we assess according to we can't know mm. that you are we assume that you are MTN mm. you are doing very well you are thriving so we, we could give you an assessment that will shock you but mm. uh, ideally if you tell us uh, we, we <laughs> if you tell us then we can't we we we, we will say this is fact uh, he got maybe 10 million or 10 billion. Yeah. But if you don't tell us, we assume that uh, you are in the big economy out there doing a lot of good business and you don't want to come. So we use an industry average mm. uh, based on everyone in your sector, mm. you know. So if you are selling phones, we will compare you with the biggest guy and you know the least who and have estimates. declared will say, mm. yeah. Let's see, of all those, uh, of course it's a robot, the system, and uh, it assesses, it gives us a figure which we can use, or we could use other third party information. Mm. But we raise an assessment just in case you, we help you to, to assist, you assist because you are not coming through <laughs> to tell us exactly what is happening, and then we come for it. Yeah. And of course it starts collecting uh, interest. Mm. And uh, yes, that's, uh, I'll go on and on and yeah, on. Yeah. I hope I'm making sense. Yes, you are making sense because the questions are coming in. And when we see this question, it means people are listening and picking up on the different things you're saying and they want you to go deeper. So there's many questions, but I want to ask the ones that are directly related to what you've just said so that we don't come back. N Namara is asking, what is the meaning of filing returns and how is it done? Now, all these questions are going to show us that it's information that is lacking out there. So she's asking, what does it mean to file returns and how is it done? And then someone is saying, what information will you need from me to file my taxes? It means that these people are, want to return their taxes, but there's a knowledge gap. So would you just address those two questions and maybe also tell us where can people go to find out this information before you find it out on their behalf and suggest to them what they need to be returning? 
Okay, thank yeah. you. Those are very good questions. Mm -hmm. uh, a return. Uh, let's assume uh, you're doing business and uh, you're selling phones, like I said. And maybe you've sold 10 phones this year. Uh, Uganda Revenue Authority can't know mm. that you sold 10, or you sold 5, or you didn't sell, yeah. or maybe you suffered loss. And, uh, uh, oh yes, le let me add this. Our role is to collect. Yes. But police is there to ensure that your things are safe. That's why if something gets stolen, go and report to the police. Report, mm. yes, because they have CID, they have investigators. That is their role. I can't come in to investigate for you. They stole, they mm. did what? Mm. And I can't also come and take care of the roads. Yeah. Ministry of Works. So when you look at the Constitution, everyone has their role. Ours is to collect. Collect. Thank you. Mm. Now, let's come back to your soul. A return is uh, a declaration of what is happening in business. Uh, you, you, you tell us that I made 10 billion mm. in that return. Uh, the returns are really specific. We put, uh, if you download what has been happening there online with their Excel sheets, which you download to your PC, take your time within the time that you've been given to fill it. There are different fields that you fill, mm. and uh, you'll show us these are the sales. This, this is actually what I paid out as salaries, this is what I, I paid out as maybe audit expenses, this is what I paid out as advertising, and uh, there's the, the whole balance sheet and the trading profit and loss account yeah. uh, is all there. There's a tax computation. There are a few uh, fields that check what you put out there. Like if you paid rent, fine, to who? Give us their team, their mm. name, the amount you paid. You could have paid to six places because you have six stalls elsewhere mm -hmm. give us the name uh, and ideally why they are checkers this side is because uh, you, you, you might say I made 10 billion my expenses are 10 billion and you go home and say I have zero but how can mm. you uh, fill out the return and give us the information yeah yes so a return is a declaration, a declaration. of exactly what transpired so the different uh, laws have different returns mm. and you file. I'll, let's talk about them. Maybe this might make it clear. The POI return. An the employer P P pays you and return. Mm. The employer fills a pays you and return and uh, fills these are my employees. Mm. This is the gross salary that I give them. This is, uh, these are the benefits and this is the pays you and that I deducted and and you go up ahead and pay that. So yes. a return is really a declaration of what transpired, what took place in uh, the business. Mm -hmm. It has due dates. Uh, of course, if, if you, we, we can't wait for you forever. So there are due dates, which again are in the law. Yeah. And I talked about those monthly returns, the annual returns. And, and again, I know for many of our people, uh, uh, Ugandans, we, we see a good idea and we run. You know, we ran. After three years, we found we've made 10 billion. We'll even come here and testify. Mm. Uh, we'll give tithe. Uh, but uh, <laughs> you'll find that uh, you haven't returned, you haven't registered. Mm. Uh, this is one of the last things that we think about. Uh, but uh, you'll find uh, in, in some, and, and of course, I performed some mm. audits. Mm. Some of our, like Indians, they will find out everything before they start because mm -hmm. you might be pouring water in a basket you know you've decided to get all the money and after three years you find we have seen you at six different places you imported 20 containers and and then we come and then you say we are the enemy mm -hmm. and yet you should have found out your obligations yeah. and uh, we are there to help there yeah. are many other ways we help people to get to know this information to be able to comply mm -hmm. there's a lot of information as I'll go ahead, maybe as we wind up, I'll, I'll give you where we can go for information. Oh, information. We can even come and teach you. Mm, we have mm. a lot of outreaches. We call them outreaches. Mm. Where clinics, hubs, mm. uh, where we come and help. Mm. And there are also different uh, challenges that happen in different sectors where we come and, and advise and help and teach. Yeah. Thank you so much. One of the things I'm hearing is that we also have to take responsibility to find out this information. So we can't just run business and sit back and wait for an oops moment. We have to find this information, find you are, and educate ourselves ahead of time. 
which is very, very uh, our part to, pay, to play as the business leaders. Richard is asking, why do business owners force all employees to have TIN numbers, even those earning below threshold under the Income Act of Uganda? Okay, Richard, that's a good question. Uh, let me say this. We have a tax register of about 2.6. Uh, when you look at it and compare it to the number of working population, uh, government uh, can't make a lot of decisions based on that. Yeah. They are planning for many people are not contributing. So it's important for us to know that that person got 200,000, which is below the threshold, and they, they, then they could grow. They could get an additional maybe allowance which could push them once in a while out. Maybe they have two, three jobs. So yeah. if their tin is seen here and they have another place where it will be declared, then we will get to know that they're, they're this, there's this category of people, this is what is happening to them. And uh, yes, another thing we advise government on policies, mm. but most of the policies are really, yeah, some of us will say we don't see the services. And it's because government is taking care of a lot of people from a few people who mm. are contributing. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I can imagine if everyone declared, if we knew down to the last person yeah. uh, that they were getting, then we would know there are so many people in this category. This is the help they need. These are essential. The other day we went into uh, something the world has never experienced. There were people called essential. There were those who were not essential. <laughs> but you know, people were just bringing, everyone got in and helped. But yeah. Government had to go from village to village, but you find uh, we, we, we still have uh, some challenges there. And so we need that information. Uh, it informs government in order to make proper decisions which will enhance uh, each citizen's uh, life. Mm -hmm. Yes, so we really need that information to be able to inform government in order for them to provide services and goods to their citizens. Right. In addition to that, why are Ugandans asked to pay, in what, or pay taxes for whatever they buy, yet they are returning pay as you earn? Someone is asking. We are paying pay as you earn. At the same time, we are paying taxes on everything we are buying. And we double paying. Aren't you double taxing us? OK, thank you. Yes, uh, that's a good one. There, We've what never we had call, so many questions. It, it is good. <laughs> it's, it's good. Bring them on. Yeah. I'm here to help. I'm your friend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and yours is your friend. <laughs> but uh, there are what we call direct taxes and indirect taxes. Yeah. Okay, so the direct taxes are the ones for me. I'm an employee and I get my salary and uh, I take, but how I use my salary is up to me. Uh, some of us, uh, you'll find I'm the only guy, mm. you know, I don't have a family. I, yeah, so I, uh, uh, I'll get my 10 million and uh, I might use it even to do things that, uh, you know, uh, that are not preaching the gospel. Mm. Let me stop there. But uh, uh, ideally, how you use that direct, uh, it's supposed to be tax, the Income Tax Act is clear. Let me go to the indirect taxes. The indirect taxes are aimed at uh, ensuring that as you get a service and a good out there, uh, there is some uh, tax that you pay. But let me say this. Taxes are not only uh, looked at. There are some goods that are highly taxed because of their harmful nature. Uh, there are some, and we, we want to discourage uh, consumption. Okay, so taxes are also encouraged, are there to encourage consumption, they are there to help our local manufacturers. So at times you'll find some high taxes in order to protect our industries here. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you, you'll find people want what? What, what don't we produce here? You know, we import almost about everything. But you'll find uh, right now if we are making chocolate here, uh, there's no reason why, or oh, if we have coffee somehow. here, mm -hmm. yes, there's no reason why uh, uh, we should buy coffee mm -hmm. from out there, and yet mm -hmm. our coffee has gone. And so we try to discourage in order to promote and our protect. local industries. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are some taxes which are put on consumption goods. Uh, there are some taxes which are not put on 
anything. But ideally, uh, where you see indirect taxes, uh, the, yeah, we are looking at what is coming in from these goods and services. And you'll find uh, when you look at the law, it shows what goods are exempt. Yeah. There are goods that are exempt. That means there is no tax, especially when you look at the VAT Act. It's an indirect tax. Yeah. Uh, there are some which are at zero rate. Mm. And there are those that are 18% now. The ones in exempt and zero rate, that means there is no tax for you. Uh, to, to pay. But the ones on the 18%, the standard rated, uh, of course, you'll find you're paying an, an ideal. Yeah, uh, l let's look at it as uh, we are promoting some of our people. There's so many reasons under there. But uh, as we pay, uh, government is also taking care of uh, us. Mm -hmm. uh, why pay? I think is the question I should be answering there. Why pay, indirect or direct, mm. in order to get services from government? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so <laughs> someone seems to be in doubt, but remember we agreed David is not government, right? Are we okay with that? Yeah. Maybe Pastor Chris will bring us someone from government to follow up this conversation. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> you all know. <laughs> David, speaking, you've said something critical there. You've said some of these taxes are actually meant to, to protect our local manufacturers, right? To encourage us to purchase from, the, from them as opposed to purchasing from foreigners. But somebody's saying no to that. They're saying, how come you are able to tax burden on fellow Ugandan and gives a lot of incentives to foreign farms who actually can pay the lofty taxes but seem to be killing our very own? That's from patience. Okay, thank you. Let me talk about exemptions. Uh, government is uh, encouraging, uh, is encouraging manufacturers, it's encouraging local manufacturers and manufacturers from out. Because when someone comes here and uh, plants a farm here and uh, brings maybe, let's call it 20, 30 million dollars, uh, we get more people being employed. Yeah. Uh, but you'll find uh, you and me are seated here. The idea is here. Mm. Government has put even money in UDB. M government has put money. Government is helping circles. And many of us don't have these ideas. Yeah. And so, uh, yes, uh, someone sees the opportunity, comes and sinks money in this economy. But this is not my part. The, the part is... Uh, okay, I, I'm, I'm speaking this for, really, the fact that uh, there if you go to UIA, yeah. Uganda Investment Authority, you'll be amazed at how many ideas they have in their corporate. I mean, they have a lot of ideas, and you can go as a local manufacturer. But mm. many of us are waiting for jobs, uh, into all this. And, and so when someone brings their 20, 30, 40 million dollars, I can imagine if you have maybe maybe five million shillings imagine mm, going mm. to start a business in uh, in 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 the u.s uh ideally uh you you'll find maybe they don't need you <laughs> so you'll find you can't enter yeah. that market uh, here we're encouraging people uh, to come and 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 produce here in order to do the import sub uh, let me let me call it substitution mm. where we don't have to import but we produce it here yeah. now many of us here don't ha okay i don't want to say we don't have the capacity i want to say we are seated mm -hmm. and uh, we are not taking uh, the opportunities available yeah. so we allow other people of course uh, there are a lot of things there but ideally, uh, why we're encouraging or why government is encouraging other people is because they're coming to sink in money. They need to be, to feel safe, yeah. to know that they can invest. And uh, yes, and we, we show them that there will be a return on investment. We show them the opportunities here. And um, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's easy to point a finger at, uh, at them, but what are you doing? What are you doing? How have you started business yeah. and uh, you're saying that government hasn't uh, mm. helped you? Yeah. There yeah. are a lot of things that yeah. government is doing to help uh, businesses, mm. uh, to help us uh, be out there and thrive. If you have an idea to mm. get out of your bed, uh, go and do business. I don't think anyone will stop you. And uh, there are a lot of things, even in the law, uh, meant to help you and protect you. I'll give one. If, if you're in lost position, 
I know this is uh, dangerous. Some people again stay in loss for 20 years. Mm. But if you are in loss position, there is no income tax to pay. If you're a business, if you really record your business expenditures and bring them to book, there is there's no and, and, and we will see mm. that business mm. is not doing well. well. Then the time you come through and you're on the profit side, then you should also uh, honor your obligations because you're enjoying services. Uh, which someone in Somalia isn't enjoying, yeah. if, if I may say. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So someone is asking a question that is, two people actually asking a particular question that is quite similar. Uh, one, first one came in from Mona, the second one is coming in from Wycliffe. I think they're both similar. And it's saying, what strategic steps is URA taking to expand the tax register? The lack of thereof means that the existing base is being ever squeezed out of business. There are so many people we have in business, but so few people are returning their taxes. That means that you're always squeezing the ones who are returning and complying, yet there are others out there. So what are you doing to build that gap? Because I think if many people participate, we might not exactly need to have more taxes um, charged on the same people. Yeah. Yes, expanding the tax register. We expand the register every year. And uh, this last year, we expanded the register by uh, about 850,000 uh, mm -hmm. uh, taxpayers, round about there. So every year, we, we have uh, a way we expand the register. There are different things that we do yeah. uh, to expand the register. And again, we, we have a lot of outreaches. We have like a Tujenge bus. Yeah. Uh, you might have seen our bus going around in different towns. All of it has reached the farthest part of Uganda. We carry out clinics and hubs there yeah. on that bus. We also have uh, what we call catales, tax catales. Uh, where we, we, we stage, we come here, sit and register everyone here. Uh, so we, 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 we have a lot of activities. We have the data-driven ones where we are asking you, please, uh, because we want to know if someone is earning yeah. two, three hundred thousand in your business, uh, also register him. We want to know the number. By the way, the biggest number of uh, taxpayers are the, the ones who contribute PAYE, okay? Of those mm. two million plus, you find the PAYE bracket is mm. maybe one million, mm. about one million plus. Wow. Uh, meaning employees uh, are really uh, the biggest. But as they go out, uh, you'll find them doing other businesses, they're earning business income, there's property income, and, and, and again, we, we want all those to, we want to know in order for government to take care of you. Mm -hmm. And I, I think the question was, what are we doing? We're doing, are doing many things. We are doing drives, we are doing outreaches, mm -hmm. we have different programs like the Katales and the Tujenge Bus, and, and um, we also have the third party information. We've also locked in on government and uh, especially the large taxpayers. The, the, there's part of the, there's a, the Income Tax Act talks about if someone is doing business with you, we have locked, mm. they should have a taxpayer identification number. Mm. So mm. there are many things we are doing yeah. uh, to ensure that, uh, uh, that we, we grow the register, the yeah. tax register. Yeah. Yes. So the questions coming in are showing a lot of knowledge gap. Some people say, what's the difference between rental tax and property tax? All of that, which shows that I think URA needs to even do more and get out even more to these people so they can get, receive this information. The questions are still many, but this, I think, will be very beneficial to people, to many people. Are there benefits that URA offers to startups? Well, uh, let me say this. Uh, for starters, we educate. We educate. Because if you don't know, you're going to do the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. uh, or you're not going to do the right thing. You're not going to, to be compliant. So uh, the first thing that we do is educate. Yeah. We teach. And uh, we start with sectors. We, we have what we call onboarding sessions uh, where we call you in and teach you. We also have URA TV right now. Uh, we have the YouTube channels where there's a lot of information. Mm. Uh, I've, I've been on them mm. <laughs> teaching. But uh, when you advertise, you'll be surprised how many people will, <laughs> will come in. Uh, you think a million people will come in and, uh, you know, you get a handful. Uh, but we're also on radio. We, 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 we're all over the place. Mm. Uh, but, of course, 
uh, it depends on where you are. So we have different channels through which we reach our clients. Mm. Uh, but uh, for today, for the businessmen and business women here, mm. uh, go to our site. Uh, go to our site. There's a lot of information there. There's a library mm. of information. Uh, please read. It might be boring, but uh, put it in the category of making money. The oh, way yeah. that idea that you have eh? uh, in your conscience, say this is money I'm saving. Yeah. Because yeah. if you do mistakes, you're going to lose money. <laughs> uh, again, yes, the penalties and uh, interest are quite uh, high. Mm. So see it as uh, uh, you, you, you're saving yourself on money, mm. on income, as you read and educate yourself. Uh, just like you're reading and you're on fire for this idea, you're out there, you've set up, please also set up to know. We have a toll-free line, we have, uh, th those channels have a lot of, we have simplified on our web forms, we have started the instant TIN, you can actually apply for your TIN, it's web-based and you'll get it in five minutes. We hope uh, mm -hmm. this year we are going to make all our forms web-based, all the returns, because there's mm -hmm. been a complaint that our, our forms are complex mm, uh, mm. but we are making them web-based and of course we are supposed to fit within the law we don't want more than what we are supposed to collect we don't want you to pay less we want you to we want you to actually pay what you're supposed to pay we yeah. also refund can oh. you imagine mm. we refund a lot of money <laughs> yes, we refund a lot of money, uh, of course, after a few checks. Mm. Uh, but you'll be surprised how many... Uh, but people get it. Our budget for refund is usually uh, run over and uh, we, we pay out. Yeah. Uh, yes. So, uh, please, our site, there's mm. information, our YouTube channel. Mm. Uh, you, you find some of us there and other people. We're trying to make it exciting. Uh, and when you get information, when we're on radio, don't switch off. I've been with some people when you are is, is on radio, they switch off, they, they go to another channel, you know. Uh, of course, uh, if that is our behavior, we, we, we need some behavioral change because mm. you can see many of us see you are uh, the wrong way and uh, not looking at it uh, from its mandate. Mm. And uh, of course, uh, we are trained to collect. We are trained to collect. Mm. We, we are trained to sniff and see. From the time you walk in, into office, we mm. are assessing and seeing uh, this guy. You know, and uh, of course, you find many of us don't want to pay. And by the way, many people haven't wanted to pay. Mm. Uh, we see it in Jesus' era. Uh, but taxation is a very old concept. Eh? Yeah. Joseph, actually, was mm. among the people who experienced uh, uh, and was, I think, the first commissioner general of Egypt, the, the biggest nation then. And he set aside a tax after he got a dream. And uh, taxation is a principle, I think, which, uh, and of course, God says, pray for your leaders. But anyway, there's, there's a lot there. I'm getting too many other things. But the idea is... you contribute mm -hmm. uh, through your money you're giving and also the, 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 the yeah as you return and comply mm -hmm. but also pray for the leaders to make to in order and go out let us have leaders there who are making decisions right. for us because mm -hmm. many of these laws are actually uh, made by our representatives in parliament we vote them into power mm -hmm. And uh, they sit down. We have our experts in Ministry of Finance, our technicians who look at the law. Before it becomes law, uh, ideally, it has been tried, tested, books have been written. So you, you, you cannot start by saying the laws are bad, hard, name it, because uh, they have been even tested by other countries. Yeah. We, we can even copy paste. Yeah. Uh, the idea is uh, government is trying to ensure it takes care of us, and it has to do that and uh, laws are in place and we are administering yeah yes but they are our brothers and sisters right from the technicians to the one who is here mm. they are brothers and sisters yes wow why don't you help me appreciate mr david rusoke for educating <laughs> us this morning <laughs> clearly from the questions coming in there's so much we need to learn about taxes and there's so much many people don't know but now you've told us to actually go and seek out this information because it's available on YouTube, there's URA TV, on radios, 
the clinics and all I, of I that. I can say them. Please go. Uh, we have a toll free line. Mm. 0800 11 7000 toll free you don't there's no cost could you say that again uh 0800 11 7000 or 0800 21 7000 yeah uh, for any question for starters and we can help you even file a return if you enter any of our service centers mm. we will we have a self-help for those who don't have internet uh, you can enter our service centers and uh, there will be a desk there given to you for you to honor your obligations. And if also that is not working, uh, someone will help you do it in office. Mm -hmm. But come to our service centers, come to us, don't run away. Mm -hmm. I would have given my number, but uh, yes, come and look for me. I'm at the <laughs> URA tower, but uh, we have a service center there. Yeah. Come, mm -hmm. uh, come and find out, come and learn, come and know. Uh, we have different ways of learning. Some of us are visual, audio. Try all the learning uh, options available out there. Mm. If they're not working, uh, fine. Uh, come to us and uh, we will still be able right. to help you. Right. Okay. And, and one of the things, maybe for those who want more information, this particular weekend for the next maybe three weeks, we're going to have the Thrive Business Breakfast. Come on, people. Those who were here last week, you know how incredible that was. And I know that one of those days, we're going to talk about finances, right, Pastor Chris? The Thrive Business Breakfast is here to strengthen foundations in business. And so I know that one of those days, we're going to talk about finances. And hopefully, our speakers will touch on taxes, not to the depth. For this particular depth, we need to go and find all that information with URA. But I know some are asking, should I have another receipt book? There's so many interesting questions here. Yeah, tax invasion, what's tax avoidance, some of that information we can get. So sign up for the Thrive Business Breakfast. These business spaces have business leaders who have gone through these processes before. So we can also learn from each other. Yeah. So come to the Thrive Business Breakfast. The next, the second session is happening this Thursday at 7 a.m. here at Worship Harvest Nalia. So the link is running online. Talk to your location pastor, wherever you are, and they'll give you the information you need to pay so that you can be able to be a part of these spaces because you learn so much from different people. Because one of the things I'm hearing is that if you don't comply and you want your business to exist for the next 50 years, at some point you are is going to catch up with you, you know, and you don't want that, yeah, and then they will decide for you how much you should pay, whether correct or not. So let's educate ourselves, let's be in these spaces, sign up for Thrive Business Breakfast and be part of that conversation and equip and strengthen your business foundations. Thank you so much for being here. Help me appreciate Mr. David Rusoke. Help me appreciate the Business Garage team for bringing us such incredible people to give us such information, rather not have gotten from anywhere else and thank you for being here you've done a good job thank you for sharing the link thank you for implementing thank you for doing business our economy is getting better just stick at it we will get there eventually if we follow through now we never want to close our broadcast without giving you an opportunity to receive jesus as your personal lord and savior here at Business Garage, we believe that God is the author and finisher of our faith. God is the author and finisher of our lives. And so it's very simple for you to give your life back to him. You simply believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that he is Lord. So why don't you say this prayer after me and give your life to Jesus. Just say, dear Jesus, I come to you today to receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. Take my life and do something. Amen. If you've just said that prayer, it's official. You've joined the family of God. You're born again. And we would love to pray with you. There's a number running on your screen right now. If you're watching on YouTube, the number is 0775-642-449. 0775-642-449. Text that number. Let the pastor behind that line know that you've just made a decision to give your life to Jesus. But if you're also a business leader, you're discouraged, you just need prayer. You know, you can still go ahead and send a WhatsApp call and the pastor behind that line will be able to connect with you and pray with you. Whatever you're going through, I'm sure God is able to handle it. Thank you so much for joining us today. We love you and we'll see you next Sunday. Same platform. Remember this time we are starting at 7.20. So next Sunday, be here at 7.20. We'll have even more information to share with you so you can run the best kingdom business out there. See you next Sunday.